everybody welcome back to my wings of refuge i'm excited today y'all because just let me say <laughs> the lord is good um i have tried two different attempts to film a video this week and it was just chopped off it did not work it failed completely failed hey you're okay and so this video is something that i've kind of wanted to do for a while and I kept second guessing myself. And so, with these two failed attempts, um, I fell back on this idea. And I really feel like the Lord has given me this for somebody. I don't know who or what. And so, I just hope this reaches somebody out there. So, um, I will keep this as short as possible because... It is so hot outside and I'm melting and she insists on being held, <laughs> which makes me warmer. So, about eight years ago, I had a neck injury. I herniated C6 and C7 in my spine and my neck. And for about a solid year, I really wasn't able to do anything. I have permanent nerve damage in my left hand and... Even though that was a very, very difficult time in my life, it was also one of the most rewarding and it, it is just something, you know how sometimes you hear, you know, God can take something bad and make it for his good. Sometimes I also think he knows the desires of our hearts, right? Sometimes I believe he can allow things to happen to get our attention. And I needed him to get my attention because I love him and he knows I love him. But I was thinking reading a verse here or there was fine. That was intimate time with him. And I would go on about my business. If I missed a day or two or a week, it was okay. And during this time of my life, I was not able to do anything but read. I couldn't iron clothes. I couldn't run a vacuum cleaner. It was everything I could do to cook a meal um, because of the excruciating nerve pain, okay? And then the lack of feeling in my left hand. So, I could read. But I hated reading, y'all. I hated it. One day, as I was starting to feel almost depressed, and I was getting angry, and, and I recognized that, Luckily, because I started questioning the Lord, why would you do this to me? I'm doing your work, and why would you allow, allow this to happen to me? Well, realizing I was in trouble, I reached to my bookshelf, which the only things I really had on there were like photo albums and books left from my dad. When my mother died and he remarried, I got all of his books, and he used to pastor, and so I had all of his pastoring books, all of his um, commentaries and study Bibles and all of those things. And so there's a few little books squeezed in here and there. And so I went to the bookshelf and I found a book called Becoming Emotionally Whole. Well, I recognized I was not emotionally whole and it was a thin, easy to read. And so I pulled that off the shelf and I began to read it. And as I did, it spoke straight to my heart. So much so that I ran to the phone and I called my dad. Dad, was this your book? Was this your book? It was amazing. And he says, I've never heard of that book. Never saw it in my life. So I asked my husband, is this your book? Where did, where did this book come from? It, it's amazing. It's like, it has saved me. And he said, Shannon, I've never seen this book before in my life. At the time, my son was still living at home. And I called him and I said, Clayton, is this your book? Where did it come from? Mom, I've never seen this book before in my life. And so that is when I began to realize somehow, some way, the Lord has placed this book on my shelf. I don't know where it came from, but it spoke to me right where I was. And it, it really, the Lord rescued me through that book. And so at that point, I became hungry for it. What else is on this shelf? What else can I glean from this knowledge of others? And so I pulled out the Bible and I started to read. And that's when I discovered the Lord wanted me to read. I had this new love and craving for the Word. And so as I began to read more of the scriptures, 
the Lord began to speak more and more to me. And all of a sudden, I realized I had this addiction, this really cool addiction of books. And not just any book. I wanted to hear what the Lord had to say, but I also wanted to hear what the Lord was saying through others. Hey, girl. You need him? Am I getting excited? And so that is when I reached out and I started reading more and more. So, like I said, it's been eight years. And so over these eight years, I have read thousands of books. Um, I feel like I can say that honestly because I have since had <laughs> bookshelves among bookshelves built in my house. And I have loaned out books and I have books in the office. And I now have this little, almost like a book club where different ones will read different books of mine. And, and, uh, and so anyway... I have been giving these little book reports on Facebook for a long time. Every time I finish a book, I would give a quick little book report on it. And so today I wanted to do a little something like that with you. So, you, my, my friends out there, um, one of you had reached out to me maybe, what, two years ago, I guess? And we became really good friends. And this lady, I love her. And she lives a long way away from me. And she wanted to send me a gift. I had no idea, but she sent me a gift. She sent me Jesus Calling. This is a little uh, devotional. But this, is, and it's by Sarah Young. If you've never... Uh, had Jesus Calling uh, as a devotional, I highly encourage this book because she has to be the most amazing, godliest woman because every single day there is so much depth in each one of these devotions that speaks straight to my heart. And it's amazing how it really is for that day, what's going on in that time, even during COVID and all of that stuff. It is truly amazing. So I highly encourage this as a devotional. That moves me on to another one. This is a case for Christ. This one I've read probably just in the last few years. Um, but if you're out there and you're thinking, oh, the Bible isn't for me. I don't need a devotional or anything. I challenge you to read this book, A Case for Christ. This is Lee Strobel. He actually wrote this book, and it is defending Christ, but the way it is written, it is amazing. An atheist could read this book. He was an atheist, come on, and it, it tells his story about how he became a Christian and how he set out to, to debunk that information. It is amazing. You don't have to not believe in Christ to want to read this book. You should read this book. Everybody should read this book. But if you don't believe in Christ, even more why you should read this book. Okay. So, in my line of work, I have to read and study a lot about marriages. Because I do a lot with marriage counseling. We do a lot with couples. You know, they're having babies. You know, I run a crisis pregnancy center. And I also go into the school system and I teach about abstinence in the school system. But when you're talking about marriage, that is totally different. So I love to read books about marriages and what holds those marriages together. Now, there's a lot of scripture that talks about marriage and marriage being between a man and a woman. And um, But there's so much there and there's so many marriages out there that are failing, y'all. There's so much divorce and there's so much hurt. And sometimes I believe people get into marriage thinking, oh, well, sure, we can try it because all we got to do if it doesn't work out is just go and sign the papers and we'll be divorced. That should never be an option. But there are books out there that can help you that are amazing. Now, my absolute favorite, I don't have here with me because I keep it at the office. And it is called Love and Respect. I can't think of the author's name right off, but it is fabulous. In fact... Every time someone invites me to a wedding or I hear that someone's getting married, they get that book from us for a wedding gift. It is that important. And so you might be watching this video and someone has given you that book before, Love and Respect. And if so, it's broken down into three sections. One is for men to read, one is for the woman to read, and one is kind of a combination 
and a few tests. And so if you have been struggling in your marriage, if you don't even want to read the whole book, skip to the third section and go through that because there are some things that you can do that your husband is going to respond to and vice versa. And when you see that it works, you're gonna to wanna to read the whole book. And so it is truly amazing. Um, and I encourage you to have that on your shelf and you need to read it more than once. After a few years, go back and reread it because it is that good and it saves marriages. Another one along that line is this one. It's called Love Life. It's Love Life for Every Married Couple and it's written by Dr. Ed Wheat. Now, Dr. Ed Wheat is no longer living, but this book is fabulous. Y'all, it is written according to scripture. Everybody should read this book. If you're thinking about getting married, read this book. If you're already married and you've been married for 50 years, it's not too late to read this book. Marriage is important, y'all. And there's a lot of work between man and a woman. You can't just marry even your best friend and expect things to work 100%, 100% of the time. It doesn't work that way. You wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You have moods. You get sick. Things happen. You need his strength. And these books will help you do just that. Okay. This one, don't laugh. But this one is the one I've read actually in the last couple of years. This is not... You see, I got a little excited. <laughs> okay, this book is interesting. This is not the biblical um, Christ-centered book that I normally would read. Uh, but I also do like to read classics. And um, especially since I never read them through school, um, I have gone back now and read a lot of the classics that were required of me in school. But anyway, this book, some people consider it a classic, 1984. But this book, a lot of people also say there's so much resemblance into the times that we're living in now. And it shines a lot of light. It's very interesting. That's the main thing I can say. Once you start reading it, you will be hook, line, and sinker because this book is very telling about where we are in this world and where things are probably headed. Okay. So the next one, Dr. Kevin Lehman is a favorite author and he also has some amazing curriculum, a lot of which we use at the Pregnancy Center. This one is Sex Begins in the Kitchen. See, I read a lot about sex because sex is important in a marriage. There's nothing wrong with sex between a husband and a wife. In fact, it is good and it is important and it is necessary. Sex Begins in the Kitchen, you should read it. Your husband should read it. Um, you ladies will read this and go, yes, yes, this makes so much sense. If he would only read it. So husbands, read this book. You will know more about your wife. It will make you happier in the long run. This is an awesome book. Dr. Kevin Lehman is a wonderful Christian man. He read this. He wrote this according to scripture. So again, I highly recommend. Okay. My receptionist um, died during COVID. She was also a wonderful friend of mine and um, I gleaned a lot of knowledge from her. Well, her favorite author was Angela Hunt. Well, Angela Hunt, she actually worked for her and did a lot of um, proofreading or uh, yeah, for her, she, she um, yeah, proofreading, I guess that's what you call it. Anyway, um, and so she was the one who gave me this book. And this is called The Shadow Women. It sounds nothing like what this book is really about, but yet it is. Um, it actually is talking about Moses' mother and Moses' sister. These women kind of being in the shadow in the story of Moses. This book is so right in line with scripture everything the story of Moses from the beginning to the end this book is fabulous if you read scripture and you struggle with understanding some of it read through the story of Moses and read this book and then go back and read that in scripture again it really changes things Angela Hunt does so much research in her books and before she writes them, it is truly amazing. This book, y'all, is truly amazing. 
The story of Moses is absolutely beautiful. It's so crucial in scripture. Everything comes back to Moses. You will want to read this book. You will learn so much. Okay, so I read such a variety of books. <laughs> and one of them, this is a favorite. And I've read this several years ago. I've probably talked about it in some of my videos. Teeming with, with microbes. So, in gardening, um, I'm not a fan of tilling a garden. I'm not a fan of using pesticides and commercial fertilizers and all of those things. I don't believe that was God's intention. Um, this book is so interesting because it talks about the microbes, the things that are living in our soil. And when you till that land and how you rip through those earthworms and how it changes things because we need those earthworms. And today with so many people that have used pesticides for so many years, our soil is depleted, y'all. It needs help. It needs help in a major way. And so this is one way you can look at those good microbes living your soil you'll learn what is good what funguses are good what their purposes are and how they can help your garden and so i encourage you to read this book it is fabulous um and you might see gardening from a different perspective and i do believe shannon philosophy here because of so much depletion in our soil from so many um pesticides over the years i believe our foods are not as nutrient dense as they used to be but we can get there again y'all and you know sometimes things do happen for a reason maybe just maybe all that's going on in the world right now with the prices of the fertilizer commercial fertilizers being so high and our crops are just having issues because the prices of everything is just going up and up and up maybe there's some way to reintroduce the old ways and uh one of the things we're doing right now because we don't have sheep manure anymore we still have rabbit manure but we're taking that cow manure and we're composting it to turn it into beautiful fertilizer to put back into our garden maybe there's a way there's a lot of cows still on this earth y'all just think if we gathered all of their manure and we turned that into beautiful natural fertilizer come on anyway that's a soapbox okay you know I love my chickens. I love my chickens. And one of the best books ever for chickens is Fresh Eggs Daily. Now, I follow Lisa Steele on all the social media stuff. I've read every one of her books. This one still to me is number one. This is like a little chicken Bible. Now, I have also used this for a few other things. She lists herbs in here and what they're each good for. Um, she tells you how to make your own natural dewormers. She tells you how to fight mites naturally. Um, I love everything that she does in this book and I have tried several things. And a lot of times when people call me and ask me questions, I refer back to this book. I think if you own chickens, you should have this book. This book is fantastic. There's a few recipes in here. Um, you might remember one of my early videos years ago uh, where I made my Breakfast of Champions. I got a lot of that knowledge from this book. Um, so I encourage you to check her out, read this book. Uh, you might be glad you did because there's a lot of ways we can take care of our chickens without reaching to uh, a lot of commercial things. Um, I'm not quick to deworm my chickens. I have had chickens now for five years and I have never dewormed them, but I do take fecals in quite often to have them checked. I've never had to, but I do use her natural deworming uh, recipes in this book. And so along with that, there's a lot of things in this book you will enjoy. Okay, so you know, I had sheep for many years and I had dairy sheep and with dairy sheep, I learned to make a few things dairy and I made my own cheese. I never did a video on it because I never made enough. Um, about the time I was deciding I need more, I need more, and we got the cows and then the sheep left and now I don't have milk yet because we're waiting to breed the cows. But this book is amazing. Don't wait until you have dairy on your farm to read this book. Um, natural cheese making natural um 
I was very, as I started reading about the cheese industry, I was disheartened by why cheese was yellow and why they've added all of these chemicals uh, back into the cheese, this natural raw milk. And um, it is disheartening and to find out those chemicals and what companies make them and uh, that's just things I don't want in my food. And so if you're interested at all into any of that, uh, butters and cheeses and um, yogurts or all those things naturally, this book is a book you want on your shelf. Okay, that is some of my favorites I just pulled off for today. But I will share with you what I just finished reading. So this book, I literally read it in probably three days. Um, it was really good, and it was one of those that grabs you hook, line, and sinker. It is Christian fiction. I have not read uh, Julie Contrell before that I remember, but this is called The Feathered Bone. Um, for a nice, enjoyable read with a nice uh, message in it wrapped in around the story, this is a nice read where you can just kind of let your hair down um, and just disappear into the story. I mean, we don't watch TV here. We read. And so this, this was amazing in that respect. And so um, there's so much suicide. There's so much sex trafficking in our world. And um, to see that... God is still there and he knows he's watching and he still answers our prayers. Y'all, um, this book can touch some serious hot spots in there, but the Lord prevails. I mean, he is still there. He is still God on the throne and the strength of the girl in this book is simply amazing. And I just hope and pray I would have that strength. Um, but this is so worth reading and if there is a message in this book it would be you are loved and so if there's something you're going through in this world right now and maybe your heart is hurting maybe your neck is hurting um, if your marriage is failing if something is just falling apart in your life remember you are loved he loves you he created you and he sent his only son to die for you. He loves you. Pick up the Bible and read. Start in the book of John. John 3, 16, y'all. He gave his only son for whosoever. You are whosoever. And I encourage you to read that, y'all. You are loved. He loves you. I love you. Don't consider suicide. If you're hurting and something's going on in your life, reach out to somebody. Reach out to a neighbor. Reach out to a loved one. Reach out to me. Reach to him. He is the one to save you. This was probably a quirky video for me, uh, but stay tuned next week. And I hope, if all goes well, I have plans <laughs> to show you something next week. Uh, it's something that failed this week. So maybe next week will be better. And if not, we'll move on to bigger, better things. But have a great week. I love you guys. See you then.